Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of I Am Penge, and welcome to Spellcaster University, which, as the name of the game would imply, is a game all about building a university for spellcasters. So yeah, we're going to build ourselves a uni for wizards and mages and warlocks and all that kind of exciting stuff. But it's not a building game in the traditional sense. We're not going to be going in and zoning out rooms and putting items into those rooms, because everything is driven by cards. So it's a sort of card game. So we're going to have a hand of cards and we can generate more cards using gold or other magicka and those cards allow us to add things into the university. So some will add rooms like classrooms and dormitories, some will add items like medical cabinets or beds that devour your soul <laughs> which doesn't sound very pleasant at all. No thank you. I will sleep on the floor. And uh, some let you manage the uni by adding students and creating houses and all that kind of stuff. And the idea is that we train our students, we get them very strong and powerful and they become super strong wizards because we need people to help fight the oncoming forces of evil. It's always the forces of evil. They're always up to no good. The pesky forces of evil are going to come and cause trouble and we are the last hope. So we've got to get ourselves a load of people up to scratch, get them with their magical skills, get them fighting the forces of evil and basically we're going to save the world. We're going to save whatever world we're in. It's all down to us in our little university. The game is in early access, so we know the drill with early access games by now. There might be bugs and there might be glitches and it's not representative of the final finished version and all that kind of stuff. If you are interested, as always, there are links to the Steam Store page in the video description below. And we were gifted this by a very good friend of the channel indeed. So thank you very much. You know who you are. That is very, very generous of you. So thank you. I think we're ready to go. Let's just build ourselves a Spellcaster University, shall we? So we are tackling the campaign mode because there is a kind of definitive end in that mode, apparently. Uh, challenge level, so difficulty, we'll put it down the middle. It's fine. A sorcerer sounds very exciting and it's very relevant sounding to what I have planned for the name of the university. Uh, game length, I've put it onto marathon and that comes at the advice of the person that gifted this game to us because they've played it way more than I have. And they said that probably gives us a good chance to actually you know, get used to the game and have some fun with it and all that kind of stuff. So I think that will do the job. And now we have to name our university and also create not just an ordinary coat of arms, no, it's a glorious coat of arms. So I've got a little idea for this. So let's just give our uni a name and then create a fancy badge. So there we go. Our university is going to be called the Cup of University. <laughs> do you see what I've done there? I've made a terrible pun. And our glorious coat of arms is indeed glorious. Look at this. It is a wonder to behold. So the background is split nicely down the middle and it's got Geek of a colour, so the blue and the yellow, nice and corporate. And then the emblem on the front is this cauldron in a fabulous hot pink. Look at that. That is, that's wonderful. And the idea is that this is going to be full of tea. So all the students are going to have to carry around one of these full of tea just to make sure that you know, they have sufficient tea to make it through the day because it is the cup of university tea after all. So so that is sorted. I, I like that. I do like the coat of arms. And now I believe we have to pick where we would like to put our university. Uh, there's only three choices presently. We can either settle over here on these hills, we can settle over here in the mountains near a lake, or we can settle down here in this foresty area. I'm not entirely sure what the pros and cons are of each, if I'm completely honest. I'm not really sure. I mean, this one's near to a castle. Is that a good thing? Is this a good castle or a bad castle? I'm not entirely sure. Although there's no kind of signs of anywhere else inhabited, really, on the map. So I assume, I assume this is going to be where the king lives. This is going to be where someone important lives. And um, the woods could be good because that could be quite good for defence. But of course, the mountains could be good for defence as well. I think, let's go over here. Let's go to the mountains. We'll settle over here near this lake. Uh, we've got mountains, they'll be good for defense and it probably looks nice as well. So you, you'll be a university, you'll look out of your windows and you will see this lovely vista of mountains and this lake and it should all look very pretty. So I think we will start over there 
And here we go. We're straight in. So there's this fella here with his wispy beard and his skull head and his hat. Um, he gives us little advice, I assume. So um, a lake citadel. The island. Oh, we're in the middle of the lake. The island in the middle of this lake will be ideal for building our new university of magic. We will be perfectly safe from the forces of evil. Oh, dear me. You may have to eat your words, although it looks like you don't eat very much. Well, the downside is that the students have a long way to go to the nearest village. You'll have to make sure they have everything they need in the school. And it seems that an evil beast is prowling the lake, so let's be vigilant. Oh, marvellous. <laughs> so an evil beast is prowling the lake, and we're really far away from everything. Marvellous. Uh, so we get these choices. So the game, as well as playing the cards, which are at the bottom just there, also gives you these little choices that you make and you can tell a story. So this lake is an ancient power site. It will be perfect. Gives us 500 arcane mana and 100 alchemy mana. So down here, we have ourselves our resources, I suppose, if you like. So we've got 600 gold. That's nice. And we get gold from people joining, people signing up and you know, enrolling into the university. We get gold. And then here, we get mana for the five different schools of magic. So there is nature. There is light. There is shadow. There is arcana or arcana. I'm not entirely sure how you say it. I mean, you say something is arcane, arcane magic. So I'm going to say it's arcana. And then alchemy. So there's those five different disciplines. And then, yeah, that is what you use to buy cards. So you get certain cards. If you if we drew a random card from the base deck, it would be a non-targeted kind of room or thing. Whereas if we got something from the nature deck, it's more likely to be targeted toward the nature kind of magic and rooms and creatures and stuff like that. So when this here would give us 500 arcane mana, which would be quite good. We'll be able to get some arcane mana stuff in place quite uh, uh, quite early on. And 100 alchemy mana as well. Um, if we do this, I've already organised everything. This university will be outstanding. It means we get 200 gold and we get two cards for new house. However, we do have two house cards down there anyway. So that allows us to create a house within the university. So I'm not so bothered by that. Um, or this place is harmonious. We will have to ensure the balance is well maintained. So draw the card Shadow Classroom and draw the card Classroom of the Light. Okay. So that gives us a shadow classroom, which are the kind of the shady, sinister, dark arts type folks, and the classroom of the light, which are the lovely upstanding kind of paladin type people with the magic, shiny light and fighting undead, I guess, and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, I think we go for this. I think let's get ourselves 500 arcane mana and 100 alchemy mana. And that gives us more options down here. So yes, uh, we'll have this. It's an ancient power site. It will be perfect. Okay, right. Let's pause the game for a second because we can. And this is what we've got. So this is where we are right now. I know mean, it, it looks very pretty. There's a little bridge going over here. This is how everyone gets in, I assume. I'm going to have to roll down the hill or something. A little bridge just there. And this is the state of things right now. We've just kind of got an entry hall. We've just got an entrance hall and that's it. So we need to play ourselves some cards. So we've got a number of cards down here. We have ourselves a refectory. That's the big dining room where the students can go and eat. We've got ourselves a student room which is, you know, a little place where they can just go and chill out and it reduces their boredom. And we've got a dormitory where the students can go to sleep and it reduces their tiredness. And of course, the refectory reduces hunger. So people do have these values. They've got tiredness and boredom and hunger. So I think we need to build these three things first. I think that's a, a, a absolute essential. We need somewhere for people to sleep and relax and eat. So let's get the refectory. So all you do is you drag the card up and then you can put it down wherever you like. I mean, you could, if you like, put it all the way over there and eventually connect these rooms up. I know you can't put it over there. Can you put it over there? There's, there's signs telling me that maybe I can't do with the big red things just there. But I'm not entirely sure. I'd like to put it over this side if I could. If I could put that there, that would be marvellous. And I can put it there. Oh, OK, fine. So there we go. So we can drop this over here and then we can zoom in quite considerably and have a little look around. So they've got some food on the table, wooden sort of <laughs> just bits of logs to sit on. Could we not afford chairs and a cauldron like the, like the you know, the, the coat of arms? Hopefully it's got tea in it. So that's where they're going to eat. And then the idea is I want to put some sort of magic rooms in here, but then we need dorms. So I think a dorm would sit quite nicely on the top of there. 
so we'll have a dorm room so they can sleep and then eat and then they can relax by going up here so let's drag that in and pop that up there as well so yes look at that. So the dorm room just beds with just sort of little sort of foot locker things down at the end there oh somebody's bought some stuff with them even though no one's here there's a you know sort of a timer thing and then if we're going to have a look in here this is their little relaxing room yeah that's quite nice a little sort of game out here and there's books and candles and all that kind of stuff so there we go so we've got the basics in uh, the only thing is no one's going to be learning any magic right now it, it's a very magicless place people are going to come in and just eat and sleep and relax so we need to get them to do some work so let's go down here first let's spend 100 of our gold to get a selection of cards from the base deck now each time you do this uh, it gets more expensive. So at the moment it costs 100 gold, the next time it will be a bit more expensive. But let's just get a set of these. So we can either have a private room, which allows two students to rest in very good conditions. Oh, elitism. <laughs> right, so we can put, I don't know, the ones that pay the most into the private room. Um, okay, that's interesting, but it reduces their tiredness and increases their sanity. That sounds quite good. Uh, we can have an Arcana classroom, which teaches the very exciting sounding portal magic, time magic, and elementalism. That sounds brilliant. Or the classroom of the light. Oh, I want both of those. I want both of these classrooms. I don't want the private room. I want all of these things. Uh, so that teaches heroism, sacred magic, and retribution. However, it is very boring. <laughs> okay. Whereas this one is very tiring. Um... I think this one sounds very exciting. And we've got the extra arcana sort of magicka mana stuff in there to get us some extra things to add to our arcana teaching. So let's go for this one. And then we'll do the same again. So now it costs 150 gold to get a card out. Um, so we've got ourselves... Uh, ah, now this is perfect. This is what I wanted to see. Uh, the psychologist... Uh, they also go and chat to somebody and it improves their sanity. The Arcana classroom, we've already got, so we don't need another one of those right now. But an alchemy classroom sounds brilliant. I like the idea of that. And we've got ourselves 100 alchemy mana, so we can draw a card from the alchemy deck. That teaches runes and potions and enchantment. There is a low capacity for it, however. So is it smaller? On that picture, it looks a lot smaller. That looks like a big room. That looks small. Okay, but we will have that. Thank you very much. And now we can drop these in. So the Arcana classroom could go just here. Let's put that, in fact, let's put that just there, like so. So drop that in. And now we've got to pick a teacher. We have to pick a teacher. And the teachers have got different characteristics and stuff. I think their life and sanity all start the same. And they also don't start with any hunger or tiredness or boredom or whatever because they've only just, you know, they've not even started. <laughs> they're not even coming through the door. But they do have some pros and cons. So they're neutral. So any neutral students that are in their class, in their neutral, neutral, in fact, um, are, you know, they, they teach them better. Um, I don't really know what pedagogy is. I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me. I don't know what that is, but that reduces the learning speed of students by 10%. That's not good. And they're not in a union. Um, however, looking over here, your one is terrible. Kathy O'Connor has a terrible pedagogy, which reduces the learning speed of students by 20%. That sounds not good. <laughs> that's that's less than ideal. Um, but then they do have these things as well. So this one here has the wisdom of the elders. Oh, so they learn 10% faster. Oh, well, there you go. That balances out. That This poor thing here balances out his wisdom of the elders. But then he is an old man. Uh, he's much slower than other staff members. That is absolutely fine. Whereas you here, uh, you're diligent, so you move quicker, and you're a short sleeper. So your tiredness decreases 30% faster when the character rests. However, she is demanding, so the salary is more, and amorphous, so you move slower. You're diligently amorphous. So this means you move faster. This moves you 20% slower. Okay, you sound like a very complicated person. I'm going to pick Sylvester... Crikey, that's a name. Sylvester... Bizenlina. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna kind of gloss over the first four letters. Uh, so there we go. We'll have you as the Arcana teacher. Marvelous. And then let's get Alchemy the next floor up. Let's put Alchemy just here. And now we need to pick an Alchemy teacher. So here we go. These look good. Ah, 
correct. Students are progressing at a normal pace. That's quite good. So what have we got here? You've got wisdom of the elders, so they're going to learn 10% quicker, but you're an old man. That's fine. I expect old wizards with big beards. Um, you're much slower. Okay. You're sympathetic, so they're half as bored. Any students in, in Arnor Karot's class are uh, half as bored, and you're a short sleeper. You do have a big belly, so uh, yeah, you need to eat more. That's fine. The food's right next door. And um, and his presence increases the boredom of other characters. Okay, so not necessarily the students. So w when he's in class, he's fine. But if you talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, he's very pretentious. Um, I don't know which one to go for. I like the idea of... And a big belly, I'm not bothered. I don't really care about that. This glorious belly requires careful maintenance, it says there in green. I like that. Um, that, yeah, I, I quite like you. I like the fact that they're half as bored and he's going to be around more because he's going to be less tired. So let's go for you. Let's go for Arnor Carrot. There we go. So now we've got these in. So we've got ourselves a classroom or two. So let's go in there. So this is the alchemy one. So yeah, they've got drawers of alchemy ingredients and some potiony bottles and stuff like that, and a cauldron. And then down here in Arcana, you just you've got a sort of crystal ball type thing and coloured lights on the wall and all that kind of fun stuff. So I think now we'll move time on and we'll see what happens. We need to get. I think the teachers do arrive. They actually do turn up. They don't just magic into the building. I mean, if they could do, but there you go. Look. So in they trot, in come the staff. I will see what you mean. This guy is proper, he's proper old. He's got a good old sort of hunch, like, you know, stooped over pose. And this guy does indeed have a big belly. And that's absolutely fine. You look awesome for it, sir. So he is going across the bridge. So they're going to take up their positions. So they are going to turn up here. Now, we will get students arriving at some point. I think, let's spend the last bit of our gold because I don't think we'll be able to afford it again, because now it's 200 to draw three cards. Also, what do they do here? Are they literally just walk outside and then back inside? Let's get another base deck card. Ah, oh, this is interesting. We could have a nature classroom. That could be interesting. So then we teach the nature magic. So beast magic, herborism, and druidism. We can have a new house. That could be useful. Or we can have a school coat of arms. So this is an item. This is an item that we hang on a wall in a designated slot. So active characters in the same room generate a bit of prestige. I think I'd rather have the nature classroom. I'd rather get that in because it sounds fun. So let's get ourselves another classroom. So we've got ourselves, we'll have uh, Arcana, we'll have uh, whatever that was. Uh, what was that one? What was that one? Alchemy. And we will have nature. And the thing is, can I put it? Oh, it's small. Oh, it's a, it's a little one like this one was. Oh, let's put it there then. Right, now we have to pick another person. Oh, it's another Zenlina, but she's called Mercedes this time. Okay, uh, so who do we want to have from these? So the, the O'Connors and the Zenlinias seem to be quite popular names for teachers. So you're sympathetic, this guy over here. They're half as bored and you eat a bit more. Whereas you're inspiring, they have a small chance of losing a random negative trait. Oh, that sounds very good. And... You're not as uh, you're not as tired. That's good. Uh, you do have destabilizing presence. Really? She doesn't look it. Although looking at this, it looks like her head isn't attached to her body. That would be a little bit destabilizing. Um, you move a little slower, and the students earn ten percent slower. And you're a procrastinator. You act and are exhausted twenty five percent slower. Let's go for you. Let's go for you, Robert O'Connor. We'll get you in. It's fine. And that room's got nature things in. It's got trees and rocks and plants and shrubs and whatever that is. What's that? An egg? Uh, it could be an egg or a mushroom or something. So there we go. So we've still got no students. Now, at some point, students will join. Now, we have these little messages down here as well. So this is from the king. Ah, new school for my kingdom. That is a very good thing. Oh, yes, a very good thing. And I am ready to help you, for I am a good and just king. What can I do for you? <laughs> Give us cash, king man. So we can either have some money or what's that do? Receive a card chosen among three. Okay. So we can either get ourselves a choice of three cards, like we've seen before, or 200 gold. I mean, if we did get 200 gold, we'd just spend it on that anyway. And it's going to cost 250 to draw a base card. So we might as well do that. I think we'll choose a card. 
So yes, uh, your highness, can I have the help of the royal architects, please? So we can have a truth chamber. Students can quickly improve their retribution skills. And now that's, um, that's light magic. We haven't got anything in for light magic yet. Uh, an enchanter's workshop for enchantment. That's to do with uh, alchemy. That could be quite nice. Or, or an assassin arena. Yeah, I'm not really big into the whole assassination thing. I kind of don't want people to come here and do nasty things. I don't really want to go down the dark magic route. I don't like the idea of it. Let's get the Enchanter's Workshop. Yes. And can we drop that in? Um. Oh, it's big. Oh, it's a, it's a big old room. Okay, but we could put it here. And if we get another chemistry, chemistry, alchemy, <laughs> chemistry, if we get another alchemy room, we could put that there. I want to kind of keep that reserved. But let's put this thing just here then. I mean, it's a very odd shape, this place. All right, we have an enchantment teacher. Okay, Gilbert Gaspode, good name, or Margot Shikri. Okay, um, Anna, you've got good pedagogy. You've got terrible, which is always a little bit worrying, isn't it? Uh, wisdom of the elders, so they're going to learn quicker. And that already means they learn quicker. So they're going to learn 20% quicker. And uh, you're, you've got a gourmet skill. So your hunger decreases quicker when you eat. You're an old man. Indeed, we see plenty of that. And you move slower. Oh, my goodness me. Gilbert Gaspode is going to be crawling around <laughs> like some sort of some sort of snail. Um, is that what Gaspode means? Is that some sort of snail type reference? Because, yeah, he's very old. And he's amorphous. So, uh, yeah, he, he is very, very... So he is a mollusk, indeed. So um, you're going to be very slow. He's not as quick as, as he was when he was young. But he has an incredible beard. Oh, I bet he does. I bet that's a glorious beard. Uh, however, she is diligent. So she moves faster and brave. So she inflicts 35% more damage in combat. Oh, so the teachers go and fight as well. Okay. Um, she's demanding. So the salary is 30% higher. Oh, okay. And she's a and she's a racist. Okay, I don't think I have any uh I don't think I've got any desire to have racists in the school. I don't think you should tell that to people if you are such a thing. Oh, do, do you know what though? Actually I'm quite glad you did tell me, because then you're definitely not coming in. Gilbert, welcome aboard. There we go. Uh, right, more messages. Greetings from the villagers. Hello, you. We're the locals. I like you, villager. I like the pitchfork. We don't want any trouble around here. We don't really like strangers. What exactly are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm not based in a turkey. I'm building a school. <laughs> Let me assure you, we only teach our students sacred magic in accordance with the precepts of the Church of Light. So we receive some light manna. That could be quite nice. Uh, our reputation with the Inquisition faction, whoever they might be, goes down. But we do get a bit of rep with the peasants. I like being on board with the peasants, with the ordinary folk, the good hardy working folk of the land who keep it all running. So that could be quite good. We get light manner. That gives us nature manner. Let me assure you, our school trains first and foremost sorcerers specialise in the care of farm animals. Ah, they'll like that. So nature manner. And that gets us, yes, that gets us shadow manner. And it makes the peasants not like us. And our reputation with the Lord of Evil, who I think is the bad guy, goes up. Um, yeah, let's not do that. Let me show you. Our school trains first and foremost sorcerers specialised in necromancy and the invocation of devastating demons. Uh, no. Let's go for... Let's go for this one. Let's go for the nature manor. Because we have a nature room. So we'll have a bit of that. Thank you very much. Right, and then a message from you. Ah, right, here we go. Here are some students. So now we need to put the students. Ah, I didn't create the houses yet. Can we do that now? Can we do that now? No, unfortunately not. I wonder if we can move the students round in the houses. So at the minute, we've only got one class. We have main class where we can put all our students. But really, I want to create some houses because that sounds fun. So um, I think... We just want to make sure we get some decent people. So Lisa Iron Fist. Um, she's going to do, I think everyone does three years in the school. So she's a generalist. So the first level of magic is going to be learned quickly. And then she's unshakable. So her mental health is a bit stronger. She's a bit pretentious. So people around her are bored. And she is allergic to crustaceans. <laughs> so she learns arcane magic 50% slower. 
do, does arcane magic rely upon the presence of crustaceans? Evidently it does. Yeah, I think we can have you. So how many have we got? Seven more students. Oh my goodness me. Um, so yeah, you're gourmet, but you're a bit pretentious. Yes, we'll have you. Absolutely. Um, initiated to alchemy. Ah, now good. We have an alchemy person. You are a coward and you're sneaky. Okay. Oh, you're another one of these Byzantineers. Um, Joe, we'll have you because you learn alchemy a bit quicker. So we'll put you in. Ah, you're passionate and a hard worker, Louise Gaspode. Absolutely, we'll get you on board. And each time I, I uh, recruit somebody, each time somebody joins the university, I do get a little bit of gold. Um, I think it was 15, possibly, that we just got then. Uh, you're resilient. So you reduce all life lost by 20% and you're gothic. So you learn light magic slower. Ah, okay, right. So when I do create some houses, we won't put you in the house that learns light magic because that would be foolish. You can come in as well. You're comic and brave. So your presence reduce. Oh no, your yeah, your presence reduces the boredom of other students and you inflict 35% more damage. That's good. You're nerdy. So you lose your sanity a bit quicker. And again, you're allergic to crustaceans. <laughs> okay, fine. Yes, we'll take you. Uh, hard worker. Learn all magic 10% faster. Guy Carrot. Uh, allergic to pollen. So don't put you in a house that does nature. And you're claustrophobic. So you learn shadow magic slower. Okay, we'll have you. I've taken everybody so far. Uh, you're a generalist and a procrastinator. Absolutely. We'll have you as well. Right, let's also just talk to you. So greetings from the Adventurers Guild. You look very adventury. I found some time between troll killings to come say hello. A new school of magic is always good news for us at the Adventurers Guild. What kind of magicians do you train? So magicians capable of healing. We always lack good healers. That's a card. So we get three cards. We get to pick one. Magicians blowing things up. An indispensable help for your next raids. Okay. Or magician, uh, magicians used to using magic trinkets. It's important too. Healing sounds like a good thing to me. Healing sounds very encouraging. Uh, blowing things up. Yes. Sort of useful. I don't really want to go around blowing loads of stuff up. Uh, trinkets could be nice. But yeah, healing sounds like a good thing. So, um, yeah, let's go down that route. So what do we get? We can choose a medical bed. Students who sleep in this bed quickly heal their life and give some gold to the school. Oh, lovely. This bed freely distributes morphine <laughs> to students with pain. OK, or a kind of crazy hand eating flower. All active characters in the room see their boredom reduced, but their life decrease. OK, yeah, I don't want our students to be eaten by a terrifying plant monster or the guild banner. Characters' activity in this room enhances your reputation with the Adventurers Guild. That could be quite good. I don't know what having a high reputation with the Adventurers Guild will do us. Uh, it, do we want a high reputation? I assume we do want high reputations with all the guilds, so they like us. I'm very tempted by the medical bed. Getting life back and giving us some lovely gold as well. I think let's go down the medical bed. Let's get a medical bed. And now I think we can just play that. We can just put that somewhere. So one of the beds here is going to become a medical bed. I might as well put it by the door. So if we do that, it's then, yeah, it's changed it into a medical looking bed. So it's got a little kind of a drip thing here and, and a or whatever that is, a triangle for some reason. But there you go. So it's changed it into a medical bed which is marvellous. I assume all the students are going to come in. There they go. Hello, students. Um, right, so now let's create a house. And then we can see if we can sort of jig people around. So what I want is, I want people in specific houses. So let's just slow time down. A guinea pig has appeared. Hello. Communication is available. Uh, do we communicate via guinea pig then? I assume. Okay, fine. So here is the cup of university on its little island. Oh, so we can communicate with all these different people. Uh, so we've got the Guild Tavern, which is where... Ah, that's where the adventurers are. Okay, right. The Royal Bastion is the king. The Inquisitors. Ah, we saw them earlier. So they're religious folks. The Orc Camp. Okay. Um, uh, the peasants who live in Death Crow... Is it, what's it called? Death Crow upon Rotten River. <laughs> <laughs> the the brilliantly named Deceitful Merchants or the local cemetery, which is where the Lord of Evil lives. Um, okay, so I can communicate with people. Well, let's go and have a word with the king. 
That might be a good thing to go and do. Hello, I'd like to contact the king, please. Um, I'm busy right now. What do you want? Sorry, your majesty. I was just coming for the pleasure of speaking to your august majesty. Okay, I don't know what that means, but that gets our reputation up. Um, sorry to bother you with this, but the university needs money. Oh, we can't just go to the king and go give us some cash. Sell one of your crowns. Uh, yeah, let's not do that because that loses some reputation. Or uh, I came to ask you to launch an assault on the evil lord while we still can. So that... Oh, hang on. It says that your reputation is at least 50 with the king. So we can't do that. Um, I think we just do this. Reputation with the faction kingdom goes up by 10. Now, it's worth pointing out this thing up here. This is the power of the Lord of Evil. It, it's an evil gauge, if you like. So this thing fills up. So this is him. This is the Lord of Evil over at his cemetery, being evil and cackling and killing people, all that kind of stuff, and laughing long into the night. And then that's going to fill up. So at the moment, the white bar is there. It's not moved on very long at all, very far. Uh, and this is us over here in our universe that might look like this at some point. It doesn't look like it right now. So it says there, at the power of the Lord of Evil, it increases during the game when the gauge is full. You have to flee and build a new school, train as many students as possible and complete quests. Before that, to get bonuses in the rest of the campaign, certain events can slow down the advance of darkness like we just saw there. So we can go to the king and say, can you attack the Lord of Evil, please? And it will knock that back a little bit. So, um, yeah, that's that's interesting. Is That's going to slowly fill up. Now, I imagine, because we put it on marathon mode, that's going to move quite slowly so we can get a lot of stuff done and in. And we can get lots of students trained to hopefully be able to fight the forces of evil. So, um, yeah, and I imagine if you put it on super speedy mode, that's going to just go beep. You have to work very quickly. Okay, let's get our first house into play, shall we? So now we can create an actual house. So before all the students were just going into the general class, but we can create houses, which is brilliant. So you can choose the subjects that are studied in a particular house. So, I mean, we've got at the moment, we've got arcane and alchemy and nature. How about, how many of these are we going to get? How many of these are we going to actually get? Let's have, let's have a whole thing, priority. In fact, no, we can just put on allowed. If we ban everybody else from there, alchemy is the only one that's allowed in this particular house. And I'll fiddle about with the uh, sort of little coat of arms thing for it shortly. So um, the only reason I'm doing this is because the uh, the person who gifted the game to us has said that, um, that I should possibly have somebody, a house sorry, dedicated to alchemy because it's quite funny and it's very penge-like. So um, which has got me intrigued. So I think what we'll do is, let's call it, I mean, house name. Um, I mean, is it weird if we just call it House House Penge? Is that a bit weird? We'll have House Penge. That's absolutely fine. And they're only allowed to do alchemy. Now, can we change these afterwards? I do not know. Oh, in fact, we might need to look at these. Shadow Magic 25% faster. Generates 10% more mana while studying. Oh, that could be quite useful. So these are little abilities. Or mental health losses are reduced by 20%. I quite like that. But then they've got Child of Nature which is learn nature magic quicker. Maybe, maybe we'd have to try and draw another one and hope that we get some sort of alchemy thing because it makes sense here to go down the nature route, doesn't it? So have maybe have nature and arcana. Maybe they can study both of those. And then, yeah, okay. So we won't call it house penge. I want house penge to be the alchemy house. Um. So, right, okay. So we don't want shadow disciple. Let's have applied. So we get 10% more mana when studying although we're on marathon mode they're going to generate lots of mana anyway how about we make their mental health slightly better so let's make them unshakable so the people in whatever this house are going to be are going to be unshakable and children of nature okay uh you can pick what kind of uniform you want them to wear if they're going to be nature kind of thing maybe green would be good right and then let's sort out the name and their coat of arms for this house there we go. I like that. So the house name is going to be Tea Leaves. I've taken the word house off the front because it's already the house name. So House Tea Leaves, because, you know, we're at the cup of university. So House Tea Leaves will do. And it's got green and brown because that's kind of naturey. And then this thing here shows something growing. There's nothing really that looks 
that much like what tea leaves might do but it's a thing growing out of the ground with leaves on and if you know, if you use your imagination and squint and put your head to one side it might look a little bit like tea leaves and i've decided that they're just going to go down the nature route that is it in fact you know what let's make it a priority for them to to you know learn the only thing that they're allowed to learn so yeah nature is a priority for these people and uh, no light no arcana no shadow no alchemy I don't know if that's a terrible thing or not. I don't know if this is a really awful decision to make. I don't know if we can change these afterwards. I'm not sure. But there we go. So child of nature and unshakable. So they're going to be quite mentally strong and they're going to learn nature quicker, which is good. They're going to be in these sort of green kind of outfitty things. Uh, so our director, we have to sort of sign this off. So we go scribbly, scribbly, scribbly. Now, can we now move students around into that house? I do not know. I'm not entirely sure if we can. Let me see if I can figure out if that's a doable thing. Yes, we can indeed. So yes, we can just move them around. We can just drag them around as we see fit. So we've got house tea leaves. So let's drag you back into there for now, Lisa Iron Fist. So now I know we can actually move them around. Let's create a second house and see what that lets us do. So ah, we've got Chosen of the Light. Oh, that's unfortunate because we've got no light stuff thus far. So we don't have to specialise in it. We don't have to specialise, but it would be nice because I'd like to get some light deck stuff in. So uh, what else we got? Applied, 10% more mana. Generalist is learn the first level quicker, which is quite good. And then, yes, uh, that's 25% faster learning for light magic. Don't fancy the Shadow Disciples. Resilient. Reduce all life losses by 20%. And Ambitious is a better chance of obtaining the most beneficial futures at the end of his studies. So yes, I believe when they graduate, they get given a future. Now, I don't quite know what that means for us. I don't really know. But yeah, they get given a future. And then, I don't maybe that has an effect on whether they can come and join us in the fight against the Force of Darkness or what. I don't know. So... Let Well, I don't think... Do we pick Chosen of the Light? We haven't got light in yet, though. We've not got light in. I'm kind of tempted to just put that in and then just leave it there for a bit. Although I did want to get like an arcane specialist and all that kind of stuff in. Let's have that in because Chosen of the Light. We will get light at some point. We'll get light, uh, you know, one of the rooms in so they can teach light magic in at some point. So we'll have that because it seems a shame not to specialise in that. And then we'll turn all them off. And we'll go, yes, prioritise light magic, lovely light magic. Uh, and we'll have ourselves, uh, you will have ourselves ambitious, actually. And then light magic can be uh, that kind of orangey looking colour. That looks exciting. That looks kind of dramatic. So we'll have a bit of that. Um, I, this doesn't really, <laughs> it doesn't really represent light magic to me. A uh, kind of adorable cat thing on a crazy background. So let's change this. And of course, the name. There we go, house sparkles, because light is sparkly and light makes things sparkle. And their badge thing is going to be a kind of sunshine type emblem in the middle. And then two different shades of blue around the outside to represent the sky, you see, because that's where light comes from predominantly. Yes, I know it can come from torches and stuff, but most light comes from the sun. So yeah, I thought we'd have that in there. So yeah, we'll pick that for them. So that looks quite nice, although blue might be quite nice for those guys. Blue might be quite nice. No, we'll go for this. We'll go for this orangey. There's not really a yellow. I suppose that looks sort of light. In fact, do you know what? That might work well for light. It's kind of a lighter colour than the others. So yeah, we'll create that. And now I think we want to move our students around. Although nobody wants to go into here. Nobody really wants to go into here, do they? Because we haven't got any, um, we've not got any people that are going to be able to learn light magic because we've not got any light magic rooms. So we'll put some people in here. So who might be good at... Who might be good at nature? Who might be good at learning nature things? Right, we'll split it up. So five are going into house tea leaves. So they're going to be these five here, which leaves behind the three, which is just in main class. I'd like to get rid of this eventually, but I've not got anywhere for these three to go currently. So yeah, I want to get an alchemy house. So this person can go and specialise in alchemy. Uh, this person here is allergic to pollen. So I don't want to put those into house tea leaves because that's all they're going to be learning. And this person here, I've just left here because otherwise these two are going to feel a bit on their own. Let's just see if we can change. Ah, we can change those round. Oh, that's quite good. That's quite encouraging, isn't it? So maybe, uh, maybe, oh, oh, it's all a different language. Oh, hang on a moment. Um, right, they're doing nature. And they're doing alchemy. 
Do a bit of alchemy there as well. We might as well get you doing some alchemy. Um, yeah, that's a bit strange, isn't it? And nobody, I want, don't want anybody to do any dark magic, uh, which I guess is ombre, is it? So no, nobody do dark magic because it's all too sinister. Okay, so that's that split up. Uh, right, so now can we add some more stuff to the school? We can't quite afford another base deck card. How about another nature deck? Costs 100, we've got 110. We might as well use it. Let's see what we get. A stable. The students can quickly improve their beast magic skills. Or a dragon. Oh, that's brilliant. The green dragon is moving around the school. The active students met will learn nature's magic more effectively. Or a shaman's staff. 30% um, more nature mana. It's more of a customised branch than a real stick. Okay, <laughs> marvellous. I, I want to get a dragon. A dragon. I like the idea of a little green dragon that just pops about the place. Can we put you in right now? Um, as the dragon has to sort of sit up here then. So pop the dragon into existence. Uh, oh, there he is. Oh, he just, sort of, he just sort of floats about and looks adorable. Oh, that's exciting. So we've got a dragon in. Okay, that's very good. Uh, let's get one of these in as well. Let's get an Arcana deck card in. So uh, an Elementalist Dojo. They can learn Elementalism. A Time Hall. Oh, that sounds brilliant. That's where they learn time magic. Or an interdimensional room where they learn portal magic. Oh, this is tremendous. That reduces the mental health of students. I like, I like the idea of the time hall. They can improve their time magic skills. It looks quite tall. It looks like it's one wide, but quite tall. Yeah, we'll have a time hall, please. Oh, that is brilliant. Oh, look at it. It's a stacked up thing. Let's put the time hall um, just there. Let's pop it just there. Oh, and this needs a teacher. Oh, crikey. Okay, right. So Elizabeth Corrigan or Sammy Chiqui. I swear we had you already, did we? Um, okay, right. Let me have a look at who's going to be best. I think we might go for Elizabeth Corrigan. She does have this slightly weird thing where some of the traits seem to contradict each other. So destabilizing presence says they move a little slower, but then hyperactive says they move a bit faster, but also do a lot of stupid things. So I quite like that. I think we'll go for you. So we'll have Elizabeth Corrigan. Oh, that is a that's that is wonderful. Look at that. A big kind of massive clock thing with all the cogs and stuff. Hang on, does that move? Oh, that is wonderful. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I I just I'm gonna live in here. I'm just gonna go and live in this place. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh yeah, that looks very, very good. And it's got a pendulum as well. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Still got a little gap down here for something. Quite nice if we could get something into here. And the students are in and the students are learning. Now, as the students learn, they generate mana. And mana means we can build more things. So currently the students are in the nature room. So they're learning nature look, which is very exciting. And some of them are down here learning arcana stuff. And I guess the others are just chilling out, doing something else. A fertility potion. Tell me, we have a big egg laying problem. Cows are less efficient. It could be a serious problem for the entire peasant community. We need you to make us a fertility potion. I heard it was called like that. Can you do that for us? Yes, the alchemist can help. Okay, so we'd lose 50 alchemy mana, but our reputation with the peasants would go up and it may have consequences later, it says ominously. Um, the ingredients are not cheap. Uh, ah, we charge them, but they probably get a bit cross with us. Our druids know effective massages that could, <laughs> could solve your problems. Oh, we don't have a stable. Ah, now we had a choice for stable. We didn't go for it. We went for a little floaty dragon or go away. Do you know what? I'm tempted to say yes. I'm tempted to go, yes, our alchemist can help you. I'm sure it'll be fine later on. We get quite a nice reputation boost with the good old peasants. Uh, it does mean we can't get a card out for that, though, which is a bit of a shame. Um, go on. Yes, our alchemist can help you. There we go. Oh, we've got some more students. Oh, okay. Um, right. Well, let's let's put some students in some houses then. Oh dear, it seems that the students have set something on fire. Okay. <laughs> or whatever that is. What have they done? Created some sort of terrifying portal? Or is it is this fire? Or there's a cloud forming above it now? Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that things didn't go well there. <laughs> the students made a little bit of a little bit of a technical error just there. I mean no one no one's burned to death. 
the school is still standing. I mean, it's made of stone mostly, which is quite useful. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's no sort of lasting damage. There we go. Um, in terms of students, I only got rid of one. One was rejected because they weren't very good at all. They had lots of negative traits and not really anything positive about them at all. And what I have done is, if we slow time down, I have put people into, into uh, House Sparkles. So if we have a look down here, House Sparkles does have three people in it, which is marvellous. What I would like to do is, can I change the default? Um, yeah, I can't change what the generic kind of class colours are, because they're obviously the same as the house tea leaves. I don't really want them to be there, but never mind. So um, I have put some people in here. So at the minute, they can't do anything. They're just going to be sitting about, you know, kicking their heels. So we might as well get them to do either nature or arcane magic. Now, one person in here, yeah, arcane magic slower. So let's get them to do nature magic as well. We'll get them to do nature magic uh, as standard. So prioritize light. You won't be able to do that because we've not got any light things. So then, yeah, go and do some nature stuff as well whilst you can. Although we do have alchemy as well, don't we? Go and do some alchemy as well. Go and do all the things. Go Just go and do some learning. You're in a school of magic. Go and learn some fun stuff. And I think what we will do is, we'll call it apart for now, but we're going to come back to this because we've not really scratched the surface. Our university is not looking very grand right now. I mean, it looks okay. And we have got a tower and it's a very exciting tower with a fancy clock thing in it. So it looks very nice, but yeah, it's a little bit on the small side, isn't it? Our university. We want this to be a grand sprawling place with spires and twiddly bits and things sticking out and it all looking very dramatic. So yeah, we've got a bit of work to do there as well uh, we've got ourselves some message type things to deal with that's somebody wanting to get in touch with us and that is some more students coming in i believe we can get ourselves another base deck card we can get quite a few of those arcana deck cards nature magic seems to be kind of uh, topping itself up so we might be able to get another one of those and of course the alchemy uh, manor is also sort of slowly topping up as they do some potiony stuff in here so um yeah there's all this stuff to look through as well we're gonna get all these new cards and then um, yeah i'm i'm really enjoying this i like it i like the way it plays i like the card sort of system to it you have to earn them and then you have to choose so it's not just a nice sort of straight choice you get quite tricky choices with some of them you know you're sort of sacrificing two potentially good cards to get another one will you see those two good cards again at another point i do not know but yeah you have to make those choices so i like that and i like the way it looks i like the silly thing that happened here it's got a nice sort of nice touch of humor with it with all the sort of character traits and all that kind of stuff as well so yeah we'll come back to this absolutely hopefully you have enjoyed this if you have then please do leave a like that would be very splendid indeed and and also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe in order to keep up to date with how we get on here in Spellcaster University. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. She's still heartbroken. <laughs> She's still sick. Oh, Colleen, you're, it, this is not your day, is it? Sean Bozzini is going to defecate. How's the lounge looking? <laughs> do you like the plants? I left them there, especially for you guys. <laughs> Is there some sort of terrible apocalypse which I need to know about? He's just defecated in a bush.